Stormwatch number 11, written by Peter Milligan, art by Eduardo Pansica and Ignacio Calero. I'm really picking up on the fact that this is just an episodic series where each issue doesn't really matter to the issue before or after, save for character development. So I'm not even going to bother recounting last issue because it really does not matter. So this issue picks up with Neanderthals. 30,000 years ago, and how they fell to Homo sapiens and they lost the war for the planet. But they didn't die out, apparently. They kept their lines purebred and they kept, uh, like, continuing with their culture or whatever, but over time it slowly died until finally they became the Hidden People. And in the 12th century, a group of the Hidden People were approached by someone. I genuinely... It's, it doesn't even say who this is, but regardless... A group of them were approached and were just like, hey, you're going to be the brute of the group and your name is Bloodline. You're going to be the magic user and your name is Flame and you're going to be the last one and your name is Soul. And the last one's able to use a gun or something that they can power with their mind. So I guess psychic is the best way to say it. Um, also, they make a brief mention here of like, yes, their enemies are the Homo sapiens, the human us usurpers as they call them. But they also mention the Untitled, which is the villain from the Red Hood and the Outlaw series. I don't know why they mention that, but now you know as well. And they're like, okay, here's the deal. We're all going to work on a weapon, and that weapon will take down the Homo sapiens. And they come up with this weapon called the Devolver, which I'm going to go ahead and quote them here. They will be reduced to sitting in trees, eating fruit, and laughing at their own farts. So that's a thing. But anyway, before they managed to really get it used, um, Stormwatch comes in and they start attacking them. But before they really even have a chance to use or to Stormwatch to get it, Neanderthals just blow up their place where they're staying and just like fake their deaths or whatever. But apparently they go into hibernation and they're able to pass down their abilities through generations or something like that. It's very unclear. But we've reached present day where a group of Neanderthals are using the powers, the exact same ones we saw before. And they're a bloodline, soul and flame, and they're attacking Stormwatch on this natural gas drilling platform out in the ocean because I guess whatever plan they need requires natural gas. It's not really explained. But Marsh Manhunter's trying to get in their head, figure out who they are, and it's like, wait a minute, hold on, they're Neanderthals. That's weird. So we see Bloodline specifically is fighting against Midnighter and Apollo, and it seems like he's getting his shit absolutely wrecked. I'm not sure he lives through this, honestly, but regardless, apparently they got all the natural gas they need, and Flame is able to use her magic stuff to basically teleport everybody out. And March Manhunter reveals, like, hey, I did get into their head, and I saw this, like, big angel thing with metallic wings standing over a highway, to which Apollo's like, oh, yeah, I know that statue. It's called the Earthbound Angel. That's probably where there are. Let's go. And then March Manhunter says, hey, by the way, I also saw in their head something about an engineer and Stormwatch being dead, so maybe pay attention to that. So then we see the engineer who's looking through the records of Stormwatch, and apparently there was a recent iteration of Stormwatch during like the 40s who was wiped out by the Neanderthals called the Hidden People, and they also had an engineer whose name was Archie Trundle, and he was just like an Air Force guy who Stormwatch came up and was just like, here's the deal, we'll give you an arm if you help Stormwatch, rather than her own story, which she says is she just woke up one day, like she died more or less in a thing, but she was brought back to life via all these machines, and now she's more robot than person. But then she fell in love with Harry, and Harry made it all okay, and she felt human again until Harry betrayed them. You know, that whole story that's been going on for a while. Meanwhile, we cut over to Harry, who, if you remember, got in contact with the villain, the Fox, who... Stormwatch framed as trying to steal the moon. So he's doing experiments on the fox, and he's like, oh, I'm going to make you a super genius fox. I just need to poke around your brain for a little bit. And Fox is like, okay, sounds good. To which then the uh, projectionist who's with Harry at that point is just like, are you are you just dicking with him? And it's like, yeah, no, I'm totally just dicking with him. He can't, he can't know exactly what's going on here. And the audience, of course, is not brought in either. And then he asks projectionist, like, hey, do you, is there any news from our former colleagues? And she's, she just lays out the whole exposition. She's like, you know, Harry, 
you made me fall in love with you so that I would go along with all this stuff here. But I, I, I'm no longer your hostage. I'm here to help you with your project. How much other things here have been lies, like you're lying to the fox? Was your love thing with Engineer even real? To which Harry then whips out a sword and nearly, like, kills her. And it's just like, we don't talk about Angela. We don't mention her. So, you know, bit threatened. So then we go back to the engineer who's looking through the this previous engineer's life and she absorbs his arm from the Stormwatch morgue to try to get like whatever residual memories are left there and she sees their last battle was them fighting against the Neanderthals and they activated the devolver and just for the brief time that it was on they like stopped being able to speak they stopped being able to like do all the stuff and it just very quickly got rid of all their higher brain function uh the engineer managed to make his way onto a plane and started like taking off but before he could like really get that far away he forgot how to fly a plane and therefore it crashed and he died so anyway the groups made his way over to the earthbound angel statue and before they can even walk in the neanderthals are inside they've powered up the devolver and they just activate it and we see everybody here is just devolving into more base forms. An engineer, she imme- she opens up a portal because she wasn't with the rest of the team. She opens a portal right next to the devolver cube. She absorbs its energy. And therefore, I don't know. It's some weird like body horror thing of her like kind of devolving, but not quite. But like she's still very grotesque or something like that. They say she went into some kind of anaphylactic shock. But she- next page... She's just back at Stormwatch HQ throwing up a bunch of blood and guts. And everyone else is severely grossed out by it. But regardless, yeah, she's fine. So she's like, okay, I want everybody to run some tests on themselves to make sure we weren't hit too hard by devolving rays. And then Midnighter chews out Jack Hawksmore for not being there. And it's like, yeah, no, you were in the middle of, like, nowhere. There's no city. I wasn't going to be of any help to you. And Engineer's like, yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. You, You wouldn't be any help. And then they're like, okay, well, the Neanderthals are going to be back because we didn't catch them. So let's be on the lookout for that. And then we see that they're back in hiding again. Bloodline is still recovering from their attack. And then we see like, ah, of course, we will finally be there when it, whatever this engineer turns into because she absorbed the cube, it will be catastrophic to their group. We will destroy Stormwatch once and for all. Ha 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 ha. Uh, it's fine. It's okay. I'm 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 wary now because I just got used to the fact of okay, this is episodic, and then this one seems like it's continuing onwards. So it doesn't feel wrapped up, but it also at the same point wrapped up like okay, the devolver thing is done, but like is it or is it not? It's they're leaving so much on the table here that I don't know what's going to continue and what's just a random throwaway for the issue. And that is getting to be a bit of a problem because, like, when it came down to, like, the Red Lantern Rings two issues ago, it came down to a bunch of this other stuff. Like, it was just... They're opening up a lot of things and then not closing them. And that's... Maybe it can lead to, like, a cool finale, but it's very confusing for me now. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a 6.5. If we continue on wholesale from this story, I'll think that number's justified. I think 6.5 is okay. It confused me. That's why it's a little bit lower than like a 7. But if it just drops all this and does yet another episodic thing, I I honestly would like revise this down to like a 5. Because I'm just... They're setting up so many big ideas and then they're just... Like, they're giving all this exposition, and they're not delivering on any of it. They're just like, oh, here's a big idea that we're just going to tuck away and not come back to. Like, just do something with it. That's all I want. (laughs) 